Welcome back to Ironing Out the Kinks, episode 11. 11 is my lucky number, do you know that? I do know that. Yeah? Well, yeah. Yeah, it's my <laughs> lucky number. Uh, you are joining Luke and Chelsea, a happily, happily married couple who love just talking about and experiencing all things kinky, sexy and naughty. Um, before we jump into anything, YouTube. We're on YouTube now properly. Yeah. So people see the little clips and stuff on social media. Some people just listen to us. Mm -hmm. Some people might, might not even know what we look like. I'm like a sucker for if I listen to a podcast and really like it and then I see the people doing it and I don't like the look of them, I'll stop listening to the podcast. <gasps> Are you serious? Yeah, straight up. Yeah. I'm okay. not going to name podcasts because that feels bad. <laughs> but all I do is listen to podcasts. You know that. Yeah. I didn't know that was a thing. That's the thing for me. So we could have some people who love listening to us every week and now they're going to go on our YouTube and be like, I don't want to uh, listen to them guys. They're ugly as fuck. <laughs> um, so yeah. So jump on our YouTube. Yep. Ironing out the kinks podcast or IOTK pod. Just search us. You'll find us. You'll find us. And just subscribe. Even if you don't like, you're just one of our people who like us and you're like, yeah, I'm not going to watch it on YouTube. Just subscribe to us. Yeah. It just helps the algorithm. Helps us. Helps us. We, we, we're really sad that we're under 100 followers, subscribers on YouTube, and we need 100 just in order to set our name as Ironing Out the King. So if anything, just help two desperate people out who just want to claim their name on YouTube. We're literally like, we're, we're begging. We are begging. We will suck your dicks. Nude pictures will be inbound from Luke. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, what? Wait, what? Um, okay, so yeah, there's the YouTube. Um thing this week we did on on uh instagram where was celebrities oh if, yeah if you were gonna die if you're gonna die who are you sleeping who's with person? before yeah last celebrity you get one person do you know the level of devastation i felt every time i opened it and had a little look I had a little peek throughout the day okay nobody put ryan gosling <gasps> why didn't you because i'm not commenting on our own stuff yeah you can i would have fished out the sexiest picture of him for you no but you would know that it's me i know <laughs> no one no one backed me devastated <laughs> there were some really interesting ones on there i must say i loved the, the what was the female politician um uh, pretty pretty patel and the description of why yeah that was Cock and ball torch. <laughs> i'm giving that like 10 out of 10 effort from that guy yeah he knew that she's the kind of person who would do that yeah <laughs> you know he's associated who she is with what he wants he's seen her in the house commons and been like oh shout at me like yeah, that <laughs> she can kick me in the bollocks any day of the week <laughs> so yeah uh if you don't follow us on socials jump on to uh instagram facebook and tiktok all ironing out the kinks and yeah start following us stop being a dickhead and just follow us uh, like and subscribe this on whatever you're listening on as well rate us i'm I'm swinging through this fast because we want to get into the sexy stuff <laughs> i hate long intros in podcasts but we're yeah. having to do it because we need people to like show that they're interested to get the algorithms up to help yeah, us i mean the ourselves. quicker you show you're interested the, the, the less, less these intros will be Luke has to beg exactly you don't want me on my knees it's not sexy <laughs> my hip flexors aren't built for it um okay right let's let's get finger deep in this all right, top 100 kinks. So we're starting off with a, a request. We've had this request twice now. Okay. And it's not something... the same person? I don't know, maybe. One anonymously, one through our Instagram. But I think even via email as well. So let's get this one out <laughs> okay. of the way. It's not something that we have ever dabbled in. So it wasn't something that we were going to talk on straight away. But we've done some research. We got a good idea what it is. So the first thing we're going to jump into is sploshing. Or a wet and messy fantasy, which is also called wham. Wham. Getting wham. Getting wham. So yeah, when I looked into this, sploshing is like part of wet and messy. Yeah. What I read on it, it's the idea of getting somebody wet and messy without bodily fluids. Mm -hmm. So like, if you think of wham as probably the most popular wham is either piss play or like bukkake. Yeah. There's obviously different reasons behind why people like those things. But yeah, this is to do with like foods this and This is non-bodily fluids. So you, oils. Your, your main thing, we, we spoke about food play in a previous episode. So you got your food play stuff, your pies, your mash, your cake. Um, but also moving beans. into things like beans, shaving cream, slime, paint, body lotions, oils. So it's a bit broader. Yeah. And I mean, we obviously do a bit of research on this and we have a little look into it and we're like, oh yeah, what's this about? Again, I said this with food play. Yeah. I'm going to say it again after what I watched earlier. <laughs> I feel sorry for the girl's pHs. Right. You know? Yeah. I saw a girl completely covered in chocolate sauce, a bloke covered in chocolate sauce, and then he just fucked her <gasps> with chocolate sauce all over his dick. Oh, I could never. 
you're very precious of your pH, <laughs> very precious. But yeah, in this, um, I think from us, like we said, we're not something we're not practitioners of this. Mm. But like you touched on something you like. So I ha- yeah, I come to a bit of a revelation while looking at this. So when it started talking about the slime and the paint and the lotions and the oils, I I thought that there is a category of porn that I have always looked like not even category it's something I've searched when I've been in the mood for it and I'll still go to search it now and that is a really really oiled up woman getting fucked so like her ass will be glistening and oils and it does it doesn't it it's it doesn't look real because it's so perfect and no pores and looks smooth and silky and the light bounces off it it just looks very attractive ass (laughs) and then the guy's obviously rock solid so he's all veiny and then his dick's glistening and again it doesn't look real and I love watching that. I love watching someone get oiled up and then fucked. So maybe I have, I do have a, a like a, a love for sploshing in a way. Yeah. I saw a video of a woman having 15 liters of cooking oil poured over her. Cold, not cooking hot, obviously. Oil. Yeah. She was just in a paddling pool. She didn't look the happiest about it, to be honest. I'm she just didn't thinking look like about she was having a great time. Her, like sitting next to her at a library or on the bus the next few days, she's going to smell like a chip shop. 100%. Ugh. Yeah, hundred percent. But um, but yeah, there's there's obviously a market for it. I think in in the the small amount of time I spent looking at it, there's videos on porn sites, and like I said to you, there's certain videos of a blowjob, someone sucking dick, and it's got half a million views in two years. Yeah, this some of this stuff's been up for like three years, and it's got like twenty thousand views, mm. which tells you it's probably either not a sought after or it's not the go to whether people are finding it somewhere else where it's much more specific. Because there were, weren't many videos of it. There weren't, yeah. there weren't sort of um, a lot of, uh, you know, you, there, was, there was so many different versions of it. Mm. There was somebody just beans and then somebody chocolate sauce and then cooking oil. Well, that's and- it. I think for the people that enjoy watching it, because there's going to be a mix up here of people who enjoy watching it, people who enjoy like the sensation over their bodies. It's not just going to be solely people who just want to watch it. Yeah. But I'm thinking from the people who want to watch it point of view, it's such a niche kink that watching beans being dribbled over someone probably does nothing for them but they're the chocolate sauce they like the look of that or mud they like the look of that so it seems like a bit more of a kink where you'd go to request what they want to see so with people so um women on only fans or you know through twitter or through um cam girls they make their suggestion on what they want to see and they that they get it through that way i feel like that's maybe a bit more of a route than what i'm finding the porn i think you probably yeah i think it's probably I think things that are more unique, you probably will end up in places like that. Yeah. So, excuse me, I just burped. And like, <laughs> and again, oh my um, lord, are you okay? Yeah, I'm alright. I thought I was dying, but I'm okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think it is, I understand the point to it. When I was reading about it, and again, it was talking about like the sensual feeling of like the the sort of whatever it, whatever it is, like gooey stuff between the two of you. Mm-hmm. I was like, you know what, that could be a bit sexy if it was the right thing. For me, what puts me off is smells. Yeah. The wrong smell in the bedroom. I'm like, oh, why is that? I can't get my mind off it. I've got a busy brain. So like, <laughs> if I can smell beans, I'm going to be thinking of all the different times I've eaten beans. You know what I mean? I'm not thinking about sex. Yeah. It's Whereas not if it's be just sexy. a feeling, like when we have sex in the summer, if we were like somewhere really hot and it's like really sweaty sex, oh, I that's like a that. really nice, yeah, it's yeah. a nice feeling because there's like, it's, it's, yeah, there's a feeling of difference between you. It's not just your skin on skin. Mm. It's like, so something I'm thinking here. The, the the feeling of being naked and horny and having slime poured over you could be quite a nice feeling because it's slowly like touching the areas where it's, it's why are you like you're smiling we're gonna at me <laughs> we're gonna do this and it's gonna cost me a fortune because does anybody know where you can buy wholesale the, boxes of slime because i'm asking for a friend <laughs> literally what was going through my head then was people won't notice about you but you've probably got the most expensive taste of anybody i've ever met <laughs> you know we we you wanted a, a white noise machine. And I was like, don't need a white noise machine. I've got a white noise app and it's got so many things on it and it's free. You're like, oh, okay. What did I have to do last night before bed? Plug in our new white noise machine. <laughs> exactly. And what did it do? It sent us to sleep. It's the exact same as our fucking, the, the app I've got. Well, I enjoyed it. Fuck me. So yeah, so <laughs> if anybody knows where we can spend hundreds of pounds on slime, um, just to try something once and then Chelsea tell me she doesn't like it or the slime's not high enough quality and we need the more expensive <laughs> stuff, I'll be really fucking grateful. Really, really grateful. 
Um, yeah, no, I agree. I think it could be something to do. But I, it needs I to almost be... understand the the um, the sensual side of it. Maybe not with things like cake and beans. That might creep me out personally, but it's going to feel good for someone. Yeah, I think it was probably when we were talking about like that slick and that shine and stuff. Probably similar to why people like latex. Yeah, you know, it gives that complete, completely flush. Like you say, no. Poor, completely uh, imperfection, mm. uh, completely perfection, you know, slick look and shiny. There's probably something similar in there. Yeah. I so, didn't think about it like that. I know, I'm just the genius. You're just great. I just thought of that right now. <laughs> um, if you've got any points on that or anything that you think, fucking hell, they didn't talk about that, maybe they could have a look at that. Yeah. Let us know. It's, it's, not our, it's not our bag. And if it's your bag, like, give us some insight. It's all, we're all about learning. Right? Why are you smiling at me? Because I'm just, I'm just seeing the pound signs in your eyes for the slime <laughs> that I'm going to have to buy. Uh, and then I'll start pouring it on you and you'll go, did you put the washing on? And I'll be like, this isn't sexy anymore. You fucking ruined it. <laughs> right, what's, what, what's next? So rolling into C and C. C and C. Right, so yeah. this is, we talked about this at length and we were like, oh, it's dodgy to do this. So I feel like a little disclaimer beforehand. This is a kink where communication is key. And if there's no communication, then it's just not, not going to work. Yeah. There is a bit of a trigger surrounding things like um, previous traumas, overstepping boundaries. C and C stands for consensual, non-consensual. We so can't underline that first C enough. Yeah. You so know. it's it's essentially saying no when you mean yes in a role play way so you can understand why that could trigger some people so i think that needs to be said before we even roll into this yeah massive massive trust you know you need to this i don't feel like this is something you can just do with a casual you know this has to be something that you do with somebody that you trust and and they understand your boundaries and you understand theirs yeah so we're underlining the c huge fucking underline on the c the first c big old you know thick Juicy laugh. <laughs> Where's my head going? <laughs> you dirty bitch. Um, the reason why I I was quite like I think we should do this is because the amount of women that I've met in my life mm-hmm. that once you get down to the nitty gritty tell you I like the that side of things the consensual non consensual you know whatever you want to call it so many people do yeah and again that's not. It's such a tricky thing because somebody who's a, like a, an idiot, when you get these idiot people who are like, well, so, you know, they want it like this. Mm. It's like, no, no, no. It's like a trusting, safe environment where they can role play. It's all it is. And it's it, just role play. It's the emphasis on the safe. So um, C&C isn't actually, it's not considered legal. In, it? a, in a sense, in, in a sense of if something was to happen. Uh, I guess you've kind of. Yeah. Um, you're not protected. Fair. So again, it has to be with someone that you trust <laughs> and have good communication with. Yeah, yeah. From both um, sides. Right. So we've done the disclaimer. Yes. All right. You what can, is it? You can fast forward through if, if you feel like this isn't for you. That's absolutely fine. But yeah. what it is. So loads of different categories. Okay. So mm-hmm. loads of little subcategories of this. But the idea is, like you said, it's kind of being forced yes. in a in a in the way that, you know, goes to your boundaries. Mm-hmm. I've known some people be like, I like to be slapped around. I like to f- be physically slapped around. And I like, and I've known some people who are like, I just want to be quiet. I just want to be quiet and just, they just do what they want. And I've not got a say. Yeah. You know? So the examples of that being, um, you've got the main one, which we're not going to mention. No. But you can kind of use your, your brain for that. But it's saying no, meaning yes. Role play of saying no. But you've also got like kidnapping, um, blackmailing. <laughs> Uh, somnophilia, which is what we touched we on last, last week. week, which is um, being fucked awake. Obviously, you're being fucked while you're asleep, so you're te- technically you're say- not saying yes to that, but there would have been prior conversation to you falling asleep. <laughs> that, yeah. yeah, I want to be fucked awake. So you that's how you woke up this morning? That's how I woke up this morning. But I know for a fact that I can do that. Yeah. And I know that if you don't want it, which is rare. I don't think I've ever said no. No, but if you were to smack me away and be like, no, I haven't got the right to be like, well, no, hang on. You said yes two weeks ago. Yeah. You know, we're being quite safe with this because it is a safe subject. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, it should be, we should explore this because it's, yeah, for people sure. like it. Like kidnapping porn, I see a lot of. What about you? I don't look on the weird Mexican no. sites you look on. <laughs> I'm not 
actively searching for this, but a woman being shoved into a boot or into the back of a taxi and being taken home, tied up and put a vibrator on her clit. I feel like that's something I see often. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's your algorithm, babe. Oh, dear. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's the, it's, it buys into the whole Dom sub. Yes. Which is a very huge covering of a lot of sexual activity. Mm-hmm. It's the idea of you've got no power. They've got all the power. Literally yeah. all the power. Because when you're going, no, 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 they're, they're like, yeah, 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 yeah. You're yeah. shutting the fuck up yeah. and listening to me. And no, it's not being taken here. Yeah. Obviously, safe words are going to be needed in this situation. I think we had a submission from someone a couple of weeks ago where they did that. <laughs> faster means slow, slower it means, means faster. go. And no, yes, mean no. Yeah, We're, yes means no, and no means yes. Faster means slower, and then slower they had means like faster. A, and um, safe word of like power or something. <laughs> fair play to them. Yeah. They're intellectuals. Yeah. I can't think of that stuff when I'm in the heat it's of the moment. It's far too much. It's way too much. Yes I don't need and to no, stop we're and, good with. Yeah, I'm not working out Pythagoras theorem in the middle of sex. You know what I mean? <laughs> it just needs to be simple. Um, but yeah, and I think the the big one for this is communicating beforehand. And that can kind of be part of the foreplay. And talking about this kind of fantasy, like early, like in the middle of the day, say, and you're like, I want to do this tonight. I want you to tie me up and I want you to like gag me and just fuck me. Yeah, and I'm going to get out of the shower and you're going to yeah, surprise gonna, me. Yeah, that's like, that can be like tantalizing in itself. You can mm-hmm. be like, oh, and then I want it. It goes into that like almost dirty talk. It goes into that like foreplay, dirty talk, building it up. Yeah. And then you've got the anticipation of waiting. If you know your your partner, we're going to use a traditional like male and female partner. Mm-hmm. If you're the female and you know your partner at some point is going to pretend to be somebody else and, you know, kidnap you or fuck you or whatever during during that point of the day at some point, that like anticipation must have you heightened. Yeah. You must have, I'm not going to say the saying that I normally <laughs> say because you get really mad at me when I say it. Go on. You must have a massive wide on. <laughs> um. But yeah, and, and from the man's point of view as well, it's like, oh shit, you've not just got the power in sex, you've got the power throughout the day. She just yeah. doesn't know. Yeah. And it's down to you. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't necessarily even have to be if you're not comfortable with role play or you're not comfortable with, you know, kidnapping scenarios or whatever. Yeah. It could be as simple as like... <laughs> just imagine coming out of Tesco's at like two o'clock in the afternoon <laughs> on a Tuesday, I rock up in a white van on a pile of clover, get pulled over by the police two minutes later. And I'm like, no, no, it's, it's just sexual foreplay, mate. It's all good, yeah? We're just fucking around. I'll be devastated because I didn't get to put my pound back in the trolley and get it back. <laughs> Literally that. Yeah, you're in the back with your tits out with like a gag in, going thumbs up. It's all good. Leave us alone, please. Um, something called, yeah, so what I was going to say is, let's take it from the guy's point of view here. Why are you laughing? Oh, uh, sorry. Right, from the guy's point of view, sorry. So uh, uh, I'm just going to throw a scenario on the table of what it could be without the role play. So a guy, so you, for example you could say I when I come home from work one day I just want you to push me down on the sofa or push me down on the bed and sit on my face tie me up use me once you finish like using me like leave and you can continue coming back and using me for your pleasure or anything like that there's the element of um he didn't need he didn't want he wasn't expecting it in that scenario he didn't want it in that particular situation yeah yeah someone her would have just taken control of the situation regardless of whether he wanted it or not you've got a vet that that's a lot more um like a delicate i don't, don't know what the word would be but it's a lot more unique specific it's taken away from it being role play and it's still doing the cnc side of it he right, didn't okay, ask yeah. for that she just said get on the bed i'm sitting on your face i'm going to suffocate you or and uh, that was just that's one example of it do you kind like of see the, what I like I'm that saying? Example, though. Um, I know what you're saying, and I, I, I it doesn't understand. have to be as scary as being no. aggressive and threatening and kidnappy. No, it don't, absolutely not, absolutely not. But then we're we're moving back into like the sub dom type, I I say you do type thing. Yeah. Whereas this is meant to be, I don't want to. I guess. And you're forcing me or making me by by whatever means. Yeah, I guess. You know. You can really just mix it up. And if they got like a puppy or something, grab the puppy and be like, I'll I'll kill the puppy. Oh my God. (laughs) The least sexy thing to do ever. (laughs) Imagine just there and you're like, you've got this whole thing played out and you're like, we're going to do some CNC. I'm really, really excited for it. I wonder how he's going to do it. Oh, is he going to like, is he going to like wear a mask? Is he going to like, why is he holding the dog? Why is he, why is he shouting at me (laughs) holding our beloved puppy? 
What's he doing? That would just be the least sexy thing. That would have blurred the line for me. I'd be like, is he actually? Does he? Is he all right? It's, does he hate the dog? <laughs> Hang on, I'm, I'm lost now. Is he just? We've, we're going, we're going sideways here. We're going sideways. Um, but I think CNC. I think this is probably one of those ones, especially for for females, is something that is very um, taboo. Yeah. They don't want to talk about um, mm. because it is it is such a delicate subject. But if you're in a loving, safe relationship, or you have a loving, safe relationship with somebody, and you want to experiment with it, just just move into it. Just change up and say i'm gonna say no a couple times whilst you're having sex with me i'm gonna just push you a little bit and you can kind of move my hands out the way and you say yes when i say no and then have a safe word Mm -hmm. communicate it try it you might turn around and go actually i didn't really do anything for me he might turn and say i didn't feel comfortable doing that to you there's certain things i won't feel comfortable doing to you yeah you know um but it's it's that exploration together but really don't do it for casual definitely don't do it for like a one night thing oh god no you know and yeah that's a whole whole can of worms we don't want to fuck with <laughs> so just get your husband wife long-term boyfriend girlfriend to tie you up and beg them to stop whilst they fuck you yeah which i think is fucking great do it we this is something we we enjoy we enjoy this yeah it's, it's fun for us <laughs> again we got those boundaries in place we yeah, know what we're doing we we communicate Communicate. Communicate. <laughs> that was a fucking mental. That was <laughs> such a Nigella Lawson way of saying communicate. Mikrowave. <laughs> Mikrowave. Right. Let's fucking let's get stuck into something else now. We've we've beaten that one to death. Cool. So moving on to the naughty corner. Naughty which corner. Is our advice section. <laughs> yeah. Again, I'm going to say it. We're not experts. No. Have, do we get constant feedback telling us we're exactly right and we're fucking great? Yeah. Are we are we like unbelievable at doing this? Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Are we so modest that it almost breaks the internet? Yeah, we are. Well, yeah, Lucas, me not so much. No. I like to brag about our achievements, how great we are, but you, you're very modest. I'm so modest, <laughs> just because we're fucking amazing at this. All right. right, talking about feedback, we actually have someone this week. Finally. I know you like it when I we read it I love the feedback. Out. Okay, so hello, update here. I wrote in with some advice after I started sleeping with my housemates while at university. Do you remember this one? I remember this one. This is this is quite this is like episode three. Yeah, so he was, if I remember rightly, he'd come really quickly. He would blow his load <laughs> in seconds. So we've been back at uni for the past four weeks, and I brought up the early finishes after being away from each other for nearly seven weeks. I thought I'd see if there's any change in his performance. Sadly, this didn't change. Within seconds it was over. I decided to bring it up to him and suggest maybe foreplay, more foreplay, so we both get pleasure out of it. Oh no, this did not go down well. And he got emotional about this, said he wasn't aware that it was, he was deemed short as he enjoyed himself. Dickhead. (laughs) Yeah. When I suggest to focus on foreplay, he tells me it's about him as he's the man. Oh. What a dickhead. Oh, I don't even, before I'd even read the end of this. I'd sack that guy off instantly. I would just, uh, I don't, uh, words are failing me. Yeah. The blokes are fucking div. Right. So, oh, good. I've decided to stop sleeping with him and started sleeping with somebody else. <laughs> good. You go, girl. This didn't end well for me <laughs> and my housemates as he, f- oh, yeah, they lived together. Yeah. This is the problem. Don't yeah. fuck people you live with. As he felt I was being harsh and I've now moved out of the flat I shared with our best friends. Oh. This has been an eye-opener to communicate with the person you're sleeping with. I'm now having daily sex with a new guy who isn't housemate. Learned my lesson there. The sex is amazing. Despite losing him as a friend, I'm so glad I took your advice. But but not only mine, my advice, but the other submissions that came in as well. Thank you. See, literally, we're great. (laughs) Stop. No, but... um... Oh, come on, guys. Like... No, sex isn't for no, men no. But, do you know that's he's not a man and this no. isn't me being horrible but he's obviously first year uni he's 18 years old he's a boy he's a boy he doesn't understand things he doesn't get it and he'll be embarrassed by that that's all it is male male ego is the most fragile thing in the world yeah he and, dented his ego a bit there yeah and he's just he's just really sad and he's like well it's all about me anyway basically it's your fault you're the problem here i'm not mm. because taking accountability means you have to be emotionally mature mm-hmm. which takes men to well in their 20s to be able to develop that, if not 30s. <laughs> Ish. You're nearly there. Yeah, I'm getting there. <laughs> um, 
but yeah, so he's just, he's just upset that he got called out for being shit. And instead of saying like, if as a man would, oh really? Okay. I didn't know that. How can I work on that? Yeah. The boy was like, well, it's your fault anyway. This is your, you're making things up. It's not me. It's never me. I'm absolutely great. Um, which he's not. So I'll take one positive away from that there. Um, she she must be doing something right if he's coming that quickly all the time. <laughs> fair, <laughs> fair, yeah, but um, but no, good. You all right? Yeah, so I'm just you break I'm dancing <laughs> under the table. Jesus, in the table. Um, yeah, no, good for you. It's a shame that you you kind of had to move out and and learn that lesson that way. But especially like university times, it's all about learning lessons. Yeah, and if you can move forward with that sort of communication piece and and doing that shit. How good, how good to learn that lesson at that point instead of when you're 25, been with somebody for three years, about to buy a house and then it all falls apart because you realise you've never communicated. Yeah, I'm not talking from experience. Okay, now, I, I could see it in your eyes there. You was like <laughs> reliving Burning something. No, but, but this is the thing. I think that's a, that's a real positive there. Yeah. Look at the lesson you've learned early because so many people won't learn that lesson for years, for years. Some people my age, my mates, I look at their relationships and I'm like, Jesus, do not talk. No. Why would we do that? Sounds awful. Yeah. <laughs> Good for you. Cool. Um, right. right. Next one. So this one is a question and it's a tricky one. Okay. Let's roll into it. I've been with my boyfriend two years and I brought up the idea of exploring toys in the bedroom. However, my boyfriend is really not keen on the idea and he said he feels less of a man. I, I knew as soon as you said he's not keen, I was like, it's because his masculinity is going to be dented. Yeah. Yep. Okay. We have tried role play and he said it wasn't for him. We have tried various other things, but he doesn't seem in tr- seem interested in wanting to switch things up. I'm kind of bored of the same positions. I've been respecting his limits. He's not massively interested in floor play, not even on himself. What do I do for more fun in the bedroom? Okay. Well, that's um, quite a bit there. That, that gave me a lot at the end. Yeah. Doesn't say how old they are, does it? No. Be, she say she's been with him for two years though. You're breakdancing again. I know. Girl. I'm Stop shuffling it. around today. Um, okay, so there's a common thing with with men with sex toys. They feel like it's like competition. Yeah. It's, no, it's not. It just makes life better. It just makes life more enjoyable. Mm-hmm. I think that's men's main goal, which kind of touches on the last one as well. Men's main goal in sex should be to satisfy the woman. Women are like complex creatures. It's like doing a Sudoku puzzle, but sexy. <laughs> you know, that satisfaction of being able to solve that puzzle and get it right and make it so great for them is like the goal. Mm-hmm. And if it's not your goal, but then make you, it your you goal. say that though, but that, like men are selfish and like whoa, the last whoa, chap. Whoa. We're tarring people. Sorry, We're so tarring all people. Um, but like the last guy is like, well, sex is for me anyway. Because he's a boy. I he's know, a but, little bitch. but still a lot of people They're all carry little that bitches. <laughs> cool, end of episode. <laughs> men are bitches. <laughs> like a no, guys. those men are little bitches. You got... This is people who've not been taught to communicate properly. Yeah. This is people who've never been told that they're not good at something. We live in a world where we want to tell everybody how fucking good they are at everything and how you can be anything. No, no, no. You can work towards being anything. We're never told that message. Never told like you can be anything you work hard to achieve. Mm-hmm. We're told you could be special. You're special. Fucking news break. You're not special. Okay, but how do we help with that here? Sorry. <laughs> oh, let me get fucking, let me get off my little pedestal. Um, no. So toys. Okay, tricky one. This is a tricky one. It's, it isn't. It, it isn't. It, I don't know this guy. If he's a bit older, and he might, I would say first thing. It's hard because you've got to broach the subject with him. But again, his like hormone levels checked. Um, he could have low testosterone. Low testosterone is a massive thing in men that so many people don't pay attention to. We pay attention to hormone imbalance within women, mm-hmm. but we don't pay attention to it in men. Low low testosterone can be a massive thing in But would you say that would that would be a reason to him not wanting to her to use a vibrator? <laughs> no, no, the sex toys it can be he might just not be feeling it. Right. He just might be... Well, she did say he's not even that interested in foreplay himself. But then you can say testosterone, but there are different levels of sex drives. There is, and he might be like closer to like asexual. But No, you're going from one extreme to another now. He might just have a low sex drive. Yeah, asexual <laughs> means they don't like sex. 
I guess I didn't think of the spectrum that way. Yeah, asexual just means that they're... Yeah, I know, they, of course. They don't get turned on like that. And he may just be closer to it. He may just have a really low sex drive. So I wonder if it's been like this throughout the relationship or if it's a recent thing. Yeah, that's the thing is normally early, you know, the honeymoon stage of a relationship, mm-hmm. everyone's banging all the time. Mm-hmm. So it would be interesting to know a bit more. But I think there's there's multiple angles to hit on this. Is... Is he a bit older? Maybe look at his, his, his testosterone levels. Has he always been like this? Is he been raised conservatively and just has a really bad relationship with sex? It's really odd for me that a man doesn't like getting his dick sucked. Yeah. I can't imagine a world where men don't like getting blowjobs. There's a reason why it's so, so I, popular. I do know two people who don't like it. I just don't think they've been getting it right. And I'd love to have the conversation with him and ask why. <laughs> Can we? Yeah, possibly. Yeah. Speak to them because there may be a thing to it, but if you don't like blowjobs, you still kind of like sex. But maybe what if someone's never had a good blowjob? It's That's just what I'm always saying. been effort. I've had some horrendous blowjobs in my life <laughs> and it, some of them could have put me off. But then met you, your blowjobs could end terrorism. <laughs> you know? You know? The, um, there's, there's, there's loads of different avenues for this. Yeah. This... Um, I, so I would ask him, it, again, it depends on how what good their communication is here, but if you could sit down and have a conversation with him where he doesn't get his back up, which it sounds like what he's doing here, and ask him, why do you feel less of a man? Like, is, is it because something else can make me come? Like, what is the reasons it makes you feel less of a man? Do you not want to see me orgasm? And does that not turn you on? Would that make not make you you know, go a bit crazy during sex. I get down to the, the finer details. Because why would it make you feel less of a man? I know it's an insecurity, but why is that insecurity there? Might have a smaller dick. He might, he might genuinely feel like my dick's not very big. But does it Look have the to size be... of that fucking thing. Yeah, but does it have to be a big, like, rabbit? Or can it just be a little bullet on her clit? Yeah, but if, it, if what you're saying is, oh, I've got something here that you can't do. That's how men see it. And it's like, I've got this thing that is better than you. Not, yeah, it's true to a point, but also not true to a point. <sighs> That's how he's going to see it. And especially if he knows he's not really feeling it, if it's not really his jam, if sex isn't really his thing particularly. Yeah. And he's then like, oh, you're, you're going to get it somewhere else. It just makes him feel insecure. That's what, it, that's what it's going to do. From the way to not get around that, because there is no way around it, the way to get through that is talk to him reassurance understanding his point of view because from this there's not really much understanding of what she said there's not much understanding of him yeah you know it's not like he's uh he feels like this or he feels like that i don't know whether the communication aspect's necessarily been there well that's it and she said that um she's been respecting his limits like she's doing the same positions he enjoys and it's all about him in the bedroom talk to she's him. I'm I'm gonna say something wild here. Fucking do it because this and episode can, we've because... been quite serious in this episode. I want to get weird. <laughs> I'm gonna say something wild because I'm not an expert and I'm just your friend in the toilets of a club that you've just told me your boyfriend doesn't. Are you gonna say surprise piss on him? No, <laughs> that was what I was going with. <laughs> That's that. what I, I don't know. I thought wild. If the communication thing isn't working with him, and there's no meet in the middle with him. It doesn't sound great. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, I'm like, oh, I know what you're gonna say. Well, no, like I, I kind of, I kind of understand how she's saying because I've been with somebody like this in the past. And it obviously didn't work out, and it depends. Shocker. <laughs> Shocker. Um, it depends on, you know, sex is a big part of a relationship, and there's gonna be absolutely no meat in the middle. I yeah, and it's it, explain that to as well, like how important good sex life is, and you know there's my we're doing things that you like we're not doing things that i like can we find a mutual ground and if it's just no 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 selfishness like say to him this, there's, there's this no, won't go anywhere this isn't going to go anywhere there's no room for my happiness i could not agree more in all honesty i yeah also going to say something wild hear something like this and i think he's going to be that person who ends up single a lot in his life because he's obviously not either got the ability to communicate, the ability to empathise, or just doesn't like sex a lot, which in a human condition is, we love to fuck. Yeah. It's pretty much our sole existence on this I planet. I mean, he could procreate. find someone that 
yeah, it's, it's, matches him, but it sounds but it like your sound like you it do. sounds like your sexual life. Their their, their, their home life could be amazing, and I, I, that's I great. Hope it is, yeah. Sexual life, you still need to meet. You need to be around about close matching in that way. Otherwise, it's it's just going to throw the balance out of the whole relationship. You very quickly come to resent somebody. Yeah. And you, like you say, you might have the most impeccable home life and so happy. But as soon as that sexual frustration starts building in, and even if you told them and they don't do anything about it, you soon start to resent them. And you soon start to think like, why is my happiness not important to you? And you could be doing the best things. You could be going out for a beautiful picnic on a Saturday. You could find the most idyllic lake and organize all of these things. If it's not fucking you right, <laughs> you're going to think... I'm not good enough for you in one way or another. Or it's you not don't even the not fucking you right. It's he's choosing to be selfish in this situation and not care about your needs. Exactly. Like, and he's not caring about your happiness. Yeah. We've swung this around. Oh We're like, God. oh, we could talk about this. We could talk. You know what? Fuck this guy. <laughs> Fuck this We're giving guy. terrible advice here. <laughs> I'm um, really we're meant sorry, to be helping people, not to, No, to, I know. It's just, it's a really tricky one because it seems like she's doing everything for him. And if I knew this girl in real life, I wouldn't try to be give her advice to patch him up. Yeah. I'd be like, it. it it doesn't sound right, girl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's, and of course, don't, like we said, we're not experts. We're genuinely not. We just give our opinions which, and we're just two average humans walking around on this planet. We've like, gone through their fair share of relationships and sexual just a encounters. Few. So <laughs> we can give you, why are you looking at me? What are you talking about? How many sexual encounters you've been through? <laughs> don't answer that. <laughs> That's going to make you sound like a hoe now, and you're really not. Oh, God, I'm really not. Um, but, yeah, it's... You, That's I think all i got to say. I think you need to evaluate it. I think you need to step back and look at it. Always always give yourself advice like you would give it to your best friend. Exactly. Sometimes you've got to be cruel to be kind. Um, talk to him. Don't. We're not just saying pack your bags and go. No. But if he's unwilling to put your happiness in the way, if he's not willing to see your point of view or even willing to allow you to understand why he feels that way, you're never really going to know the geezer, and you're not really going to have that good of a time, I don't think. And you're going to end up resenting him, and then you're going to end up seeing someone at work who flirts with you a little bit, and it's just going to end up fucking your brain up and making you someone you baby don't want to be. All right. I work with all men, pretty much. You know that, so don't look at me like that. I'll still look at you like that. <laughs> you little devil. I'm not like that. You know I'm not. <laughs> right. wait for you to find the women <laughs> that's true right next one you're happy with that we I'm give him happy. all the best I'm advice happy. you could possibly give her <laughs> yeah basically we've done every single angle of, of advice again give us an update if, yeah. if you feel so uh, so obliged okay another heavy one. <laughs> oh Jesus Christ I wanted to have some fun today right we're moving into the fun after so don't okay. you worry right. so hey Chelsea I've been with my husband fuck hu me then cool. <laughs> fuck you Luke <laughs> <laughs> hi Chelsea I've been with my husband 11 years only married just under one year we have three children together and he works long hours we never get any alone time or doesn't seem to want to take me on a date oh no the last time we went out he invited his mate to tag along and also doesn't contribute to helping around the house or kids even on weekends but will also moan and demand that we never have sex but when i try to explain to him why and he takes it as he shouldn't have to as he works long hours what should I do? <clears throat> I'm gonna no, I'm gonna I'm gonna give this a generous a generous read on his on his point of view. Okay. We can do two sides of the avenue here. I think I can understand the man's point of view. Okay. As someone who sometimes works quite long hours, can be quite tired and although I'd still do stuff around the house and still tidy and stuff. But men we're just not very good at communicating we're not very good we've just it's just the way we've been raised especially in an older generation i think the younger generation are more more equipped to communicate maybe mm -hmm. a, you know a bit more sensitive some may say too sensitive but um we're just not very good at communicating so you've got to think we're everything you say to us we try to take in as much as we can but we're not going to always take in that much no and, you, and when you do take it in you can warp it as well you are yeah. a difficult bunch. We are. We are. We're very tricky. We are mega tricky. But if he feels like he's being the the alpha male point of this, where he's out working long hours and he's he's putting food on the table, as it were, and being the the um, provider and the winner, he kind of feels like he's king of his castle. Mm. You know, he kind of feels like, well, I'm doing all the things that a man should do. 
a woman should be providing what she should provide, which is looking after the kids and having sex with me. I'm not saying he's right, by the way, before people turn around and go, this bloke's a dickhead. Mm -hmm. All I'm saying is this could be the way he sees things. He might have come from an extremely traditional old school family where the dad went out and worked, the mum stayed at home and looked after the kids, and that's kind of what he's emulating as he's moving forwards. Trying to communicate with him again. We try. The issue for me is when you go out and he invites his pal. Right. Can I just say one thing here? Of course you can. If it's a if it's a date and he's invited someone along, fair. There has been plenty of times you and I have arranged to do something, a little day out. We're going to go here, and you've been like, "Oh, shall I invite so and so?" And I've said, "No, like we haven't gone out together for ages." <laughs> we went out fossil hunting. Yeah. Which makes us sound like lame. virgins. Yeah, oh, yeah. pucker virgins. Um, and we had a great time. We did. But no, some, we do stuff with our friends as well. No, I know. But again, he's a bloke. He might not have been like, this is a date and we but, haven't been out for ages. It just sounds like something cool that my friend would probably like. Shall I ask him to come along? Do you know yeah. what I mean? Um, it depends. You know, if you've gone out for a romantic meal for two and he's invited like Dave and like, yeah, <laughs> that's odd. But yeah. it might be a case of, I don't know. Um, yeah, we're going to go to what we enjoy go to the arcades just yeah. for a bit of fun oh i'll invite tony because tony fucking loves having two peas he'll play on the two <laughs> machines till his, till his eyes fall out um so yeah i think getting on to i've so got know, a couple advice. of things yeah, you, you do your bit i've got a couple of advices so when it so we're going to touch on the sex thing quickly and we, again we'll, we'll say this a lot we've said this quite a few times now on a couple of episodes but for me um, and a lot of other people, foreplay doesn't start in the bedroom. It starts at the beginning of the day. A lot of men don't understand that. They would never think of that because foreplay starts at the bedroom for them. It doesn't for women. I would explain this to him and say, it's not that I don't want to have sex with you, but me as a woman, I need to be wooed into sex. And I'm not saying you need to do a big extravagant thing every time we have sex, but the more, um, the more ticks I put against your name during a day... <laughs> You know what I mean? Yeah. The more <laughs> no, versus you got other names on your list. Oh, yeah? <laughs> well, the postman was actually really polite this morning. He actually knocked quite quietly because I was still in bed. No, but the more the more ticks I have against your name, come end of day, I'm gonna be like, yeah, I'm I'm happy with this feeding, man. I'm yeah, feeding. and that could be ticks in a sense of like he gave you a kiss on the head goodbye and said I love you, have a lovely day. That's a that's a check for me. Like that's foreplay started you've given me something nice day little check-ins you know while he's out during the, i'm not saying this is things he needs to be doing i'm just giving you examples of these little ticks um and then say to him things like it's simple as things as when you take your shoes off you put them in the shoe rack or by the front door you don't just leave them in the hallway where you've taken them off all these small little things are ticks for a woman that makes them go he's trying he's giving an effort and i'd maybe have this conversation because men don't understand this and say i'm not asking you to do any big grand gestures I'm not asking you to come in and clean the entire house and cook a dinner for the family. I'm just asking for more little ticks against your name. Um, and this is a sit down, communicate with your husband kind of situation. You might get his back up a little bit and be like, well, I do go to work with, or, you know, do you not think I do enough around the house? It doesn't have to, you don't have to say, yes, I'm saying that. It's, it's more of a, the tick process thing. You, you rinse your plate when you, once you finish. It's such small, minuscule things. But these are things in a woman's mind that makes them go, Fuck you, you didn't do that today. Fuck you, you didn't. No, I'm not getting my knickers off at the end of the night. Do you know what I mean? I know you say. I'd have a bit of a conversation surrounding that. <laughs> <laughs> what? In silence. No, I'm waiting. You're, you're, you're on a roll, my love. I'm on a roll. You go for it. Um, and like dates. So <sighs> people forget to date. If you're in a committed relationship, you live in together, you've got all your life that you're, you know, juggling every single day together, you forget to date. We don't date that much. We don't. And I've even said to you recently, I want a day of romance. Plan me a day of romance. Yeah, all because (laughs) of one of my friends is doing some grand romantic gesture for his girlfriend and I've accidentally told you about it and you're like, (laughs) wow, that's really nice for him. It's really nice for his girlfriend. Why don't you fucking do this anymore? (laughs) And I'm like, okay, cool. I'm out every day working. I think just, just reminding each other, we need to do a date soon. Not we need to go out soon. We need to go grab food soon. We need to do a date. This is the idea I want for the date. Like really fucking lay in that you're having a date. And then maybe he won't invite a friend along. Yeah, I think the more I sort of think about this and, you know, there is 
space for growth from him but i do feel like if he's working if he does work long hours yeah when it comes to like weekends and stuff he probably wants to chill out probably wants to do the things that he can't do but during the week she's and running I'm, I'm, a house I'm with three children absolutely not saying that she's not and i think i feel like this is where um empathy is so important where you can switch you know your mindset to the other person's yeah you can see what he can see what she's doing which is no joke yeah your running house is no joke at all mm -hmm. especially with three kids that's tough but she also needs to see what he's doing. He sacrifices a lot of his working long hours. It's shit. Yeah, working a lot. Sure. Where well, I've worked away for years, years, over a decade, I've worked away. It's tough. You know, it's really tough. And then when you do get those little slithers of freedom, you know, your time and weekends are bullshit because they're just two days. Mm -hmm. It's ridiculous. You don't want to be being made to feel like you need to be tidying up or running around after the kids. And that's not saying that she doesn't deserve a break because she does. Mm -hmm. So it's understanding both of yours points of views and finding that thing where you say, right, Saturday, we're going to get the kids away. We're going to get a babysitter or we're going to one of the parents or something or somebody is going to have the kids. We're going to go out. We're going to go to the pub and have a drink. We're going to have some food. We're going to walk. And it's a date. It's a date. It's <laughs> you, you and me. And we're going to walk home together, holding hands. We're going to laugh. We're going to talk about our week. And then we're going to, you know, be romance. You're mm -hmm. going to feel more, more romantic. I think a good thing to maybe try for the pair of them is like daily check-ins. Yeah. I get home and I tell you all about my day. Mm -hmm. I tell you every little bit. And then I get you to tell me about your day, yeah. which is normally less eventful. Of course. Because you work from home. <laughs> but we have those check-ins. So I know if you've had a tough day. Yeah. You know if I've had a tough day. You know if I'm feeling a little bit off or I'm a little bit stressed or I'm a little bit pissed off because of something that's happened at work that I've told you about. Mm -hmm. If I didn't tell you about that and I was just going through my, my moods per day and you weren't really getting anything from me, you're not really going to understand me. You're just going to see this person not really giving you anything. Mm -hmm. And then when you want something, I'm going to be aggy about it if I'm not in the right mood, you know? Yeah. So I feel like maybe try daily day. check ins and just say, and not in a showy off way, like, oh, by the way, I did all of this today, but mm -hmm. just be like, oh, honestly. The kids were a nightmare when they had when to they go came to home. the shop with yeah, them. Yeah, had to do this and and you know, little baby Tony Junior, he's he's got into to punching, so <laughs> he's now just punching kids. Um, you know, how was your day? Tell me what happened in your day. Oh, really? Oh, that sounds that sounds stressful. That sounds annoying. Mm -hmm. Oh, that sounds funny. It just brings that little bit of closeness and that little bit of understanding what one another are going through. Yeah, I feel like this is probably a trap a lot of married people fall into of you almost live separate lives together yeah just just communicate talk well, to each other i was gonna say something here um he obviously works full-time he works a busy job but she equally has a busy life 100%. running a house and three children so it's a full-time job for her yeah and i agree when it comes to the weekend he shouldn't then have to pick up chores because he's what that means he's working a seven-day week instead of a five-day week Vice versa, she shouldn't have to pick up all the chores just because he needs to relax because he's had a five day week. So she's now running a seven day week. I would, it doesn't say here about how they spend their evenings, but if she's, she's, let's just say she's working. She's working them that, that day with the children and running a house. When it comes to the evenings, I imagine she's what the one cooking. I'd ask him to cook once a week. It doesn't even have to be several times a week. Take over the dinner once a week. When it comes to the weekend, do you know what? The house doesn't need to. We don't need to clean up the house. Let's no. enjoy our time together. Enjoy the time with the kids. I'll pick it up on a Monday because that's my job. Don't put the pressure on either of yourself when it comes to weekends. Well, that's to, your time together as well. Well, yeah, to, to treat know? it as a working day, which it is for her. Um, I'd, uh, let your house get chaotic on a weekend. Just enjoy yourself. Enjoy your family time. Enjoy your time together. What's the worst that's going to happen? You're going to have to do a little bit an extra hour cleaning on exactly. a Monday fine exactly you've had a nice weekend, you had a great weekend exactly you both relaxed you both enjoyed yourself now yeah. you're going back into your working week on a monday we're given quite a bit of relationship advice but i don't know if this is mainly about sex i mean the podcast oh, yeah. is about <laughs> sex so maybe we should touch on sex yeah um and i think again i'm probably giving a generous generous read from his point of view and you're giving a generous read from her point of view and i think that's as, this is important for both of us this mm -hmm. is why we're so good <laughs> at communicating with each other because we both have difference of opinions but we can talk about it yeah he might be tired he might want to get into bed at the end of the day and just have his wife you know seduce him mm -hmm. and like you said if you if she can explain to him 
just a little like as you're leaving in the morning just putting your hand on my back and just kissing me on the neck and saying like have a great day mm -hmm. a little text in the day it doesn't have to be like naughty it can just be like thinking about you yeah. can't wait can't wait to see like can't wait to see you tonight when so I get just in. them things there you doing that alone puts the biggest smile on my face and then I'm like I can't wait to see him later uh -huh. as opposed to no communication you leaving in the morning like that's just such a nice thing to receive from women but I think men don't know to do that no. all the time so that conversation needs to be had in a really gentle way just I've been thinking about it and I know like we haven't been having as much sex it's not that I don't want sex with you I think it just takes a little bit more for me to get there yeah here's the all the all the stuff that can help yeah and i think um touching back on the like i think the easiest way to deal with chores and stuff is just doing child labor get your <laughs> kids to do it like you don't even have to pay them you just tell them they don't eat unless they do their chores Easy. that's how i was raised i went to bed hungry once never done it again <laughs> i learned um and with the sex side of things yeah you definitely deserve to be romanced you definitely deserve to be seduced you also kind of, and it sounds like you are doing more than your fair share, but sometimes we've got to. Life's give and take sometimes. Yeah. It's never going to be that like fairy tale type. That's how I want it. No. Life gets in the way. Life's, a, life's an absolute bastard. It gets in the way and kicks you in right Do between you know the legs. One thing I will say from a, from a woman's standpoint in with the sex thing, sometimes you just got to go ahead and do it. Like you haven't necessarily got to put yourself for something that you don't want to do but you've got to put yourself in a situation that kickstarts the rest. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you could have gone a few weeks without sex and been like, I'm comfortable. I, this, this is my normality now. We're not having sex. But once you jump on back on that bandwagon, <laughs> jump back, back on, on that, that horse, horse. <laughs> um, it's going to be easier. So you always need to push yourself a little bit, but I appreciate that sometimes you just don't want to have sex with people cause they're being a bit crap. Yeah. I think there's, there's just, like we said, there's just a real scope for growth from both points of view here. Mm. And the fact that you've reached out, the fact that you're like, oh, I can put my problem to these guys shows the growth from from her point of view. You know what I mean? The fact that she's like, I want to fix this. Yeah. Great. Of course. She's Great. been with him 11 years. She's got three children. I'm trying to think what those things are called when you like you do the little taps and the little like hand rubs and stuff. It's like micro. Oh, fuck. It's called something not microtransactions because that's, that's gaming, but it's, it's something. So those little things where, um, it's like a, it's a real micro way of flirting. Yeah. It's like micro flirting. We'll call it that. Micro flirting. Sciences. Um, but just a little bit. And you can do the same to him, you know, just tantalize him a little bit. Yeah. Do you know something I love doing with you? Go on. It's not sexy. Oh. Right. But it, it makes me feel close to you and it makes me feel that little bit like, oh, I love taking your shoes off when you come home from work. That sounds like we run a really dodgy house <laughs> of like slave labor. But no, I get in. I'm I normally like tired. You come in, you sit on the sofa, you put your bag down, and you just don't take your shoes off. You just sit there like, oh, I'm done. Yeah. I'm like, let me take your shoes off for I'm you. I'm tired. No, I know. And that's absolutely <laughs> fine. You've been working, but. Yeah, you do take my shoes off. And I actually really enjoy that. Yeah, it's just yeah. a little little connection. And that's why, that's why the reason I said that is because when you said that she could be doing this stuff to him, I, I like that feels a little bit micro transaction -y. <laughs> micro flatting micro flatting it's the new it's the new thing it's the craze sweeping the kids <laughs> micro flatting um again we've we've beat that drum a lot God, but, we've gone on on this one yeah let us know if there's more we can take from that if you if you're not if you don't feel like that's giving you enough just hit us up with an update and we can we can touch on it again you know because yeah. this is probably something that probably like strikes a chord of a lot of people yeah, and i imagine. hope a lot of those people listen so we can try and help you know, right, have we got anything else heavy? Are we going to talk about something else? <sighs> Nothing Deep heavy now. So slippery when wet. Slippery when wet. Which is our fantasies and confessions. We're changing this to a bit of confessions as well, aren't yeah, we? Yeah, because like I said, it doesn't have to be a fantasy that you have. It can be one that you've fulfilled. Yeah. It's just anything a bit sexy. Do you want to tell us anything sexy? Yeah. Throw like it under this category. Fucked by a clown in a haunted house. <laughs> Halloween's coming, baby. Oh, God. Do you want to go do you want me to book a haunted house so we can fucking one? No clowns want to fuck me anymore. I'm banned from them. It's pissing me off. I can dress you up as one. Dress me up as one. Sure, I could dress up as one. We'll do some clown role You'd play. You'd make a sexy clown, to be fair. Yeah? Yeah. Can I Can I do, like... <laughs> Balloon animals. <laughs> no, I was going to say, like, you know how they have a red nose? Yeah. Can I just, like, do full body paint white with two red titties? 
Yeah. Yeah. Hundred percent. And then like the buttons down my navel. But you gotta chase me around. <laughs> you gotta chase me in big stupid shoes. Big shoes and a horn. Bill Crossy the clown laugh. Oh God. I'll keep doing that lately. Oh. So. Ah. <laughs> oh. Yeah, your laugh's turned into Frank. I Brill. don't need to role play it. <laughs> right. Anyway. Hey guys, it's not really a fantasy as it's now my reality, but I just wanted to share with you. When I met my now husband, he told me he was into hot wifing, voyeurism, cuckolding, but not humiliation. It was something I saw as cheating at the time and wasn't interested at all. I still researched it as I wanted to understand his kink and my God, reading about it turned me on. When she, when, sorry, we then started role playing in the bedroom and I'd call him other guys' names. We went to some sex clubs and I realized being watched and watching others was a huge turn on. One thing led to another. Two years later, we have a regular guy we have a lot of fun with. Sometimes hubby joins in, sometimes he watches and just listens. Anyone who's interested in this lifestyle should 100% give it a go. Our ball is respectful of our marriage. It's important to find the right guy. Having him in our, in our lives has made us stronger and the love me and my husband have for each other is another level. It makes me feel so unbelievably sexy having two men lust after me and my husband loves watching me being fucked by another man. Like you say, it's live porn. The orgasms are insane and it's such a turn on seeing how turned on my husband is. The tailback sex after is always incredible. It's one kink I never thought I'd get on board with, but man, I was so wrong. We love listening to your show together. It makes us horny and laugh at the same time. <laughs> my husband is part... Oh, this is for you, Luke. Go on. My husband is part of the best big boys club, which we think Luke might be into too. The best big boys club? Yeah, send us details. We're intre- well, I'm so interested. <laughs> speaking for you, but sounds we're like, interested. It sounds like the club I was made for. <laughs> yeah, send us the details on that because I want to know more, please. Um, cool. That's, Love See, that. this is the thing of like, you don't know what you're into until you kind of get into it. Yeah. So many people would say, what about this? And automatically people have a knee jack and go, nah. But then when they, when they delve into it, people might say like sploshing. you like, yeah. sounds mental. Well, I thought, well, that's that literally how I thought. And then I thought, oh, maybe I'm into like yeah, elements into, of it. Yeah. And that's it. And I think one of those things you don't know until you try, you just got to be brave with sex. Yeah. yeah. But that's sick. And she, she's gone from, um, really not, wasn't interested at all and seeing it as cheating fucking loving it yeah she's and literally gone from one extreme to another which is amazing yeah. and that's that's growth baby that's mm-hmm. what we love to fucking see so yeah absolute fair play to the both of you um class they sound like people that we would get on with yeah i love how it makes them horny and laugh at the same time like they're good people that's what we're trying to do <laughs> that's what we're trying to do we just try and make people we i like the fact that people could finish our podcast and maybe fuck we finish our podcast when we're recording I've had a few people say that it's made them horny and they just want to have sex or have had sex after. So it's what we're doing. We're, we're like the audio Viagra pills. Oh, you like that? we're such sexy stars. Honestly, this is what happens. It's what happens. We're just fucking great at this. <laughs> anyway, go on with it. Cause otherwise I'm going to get all weird and say stupid shit. <laughs> so moving on to each wrong hole. Each wrong hole. Slash thread section. Okay. Because we did a thread the other week and people really enjoyed it. Yeah, people people gave good feedback on that. So we've got another thread this week. Um, and if you don't know about our threads, take it to our Instagram. We do it on our stories. Yeah. We share a lot of it, but... We don't always share everything. Ha ha. Ha ha. All right. So this week, what happened during sex that made you never want to sleep with that person again? Okay. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> something just came straight to my head. Uh, you've told me some of your stories. I've told you, yeah. There's one that I've I've told you that that's the one that came straight to my head. Uh, that one comes to my head often because similar subjects get brought up about it. Does it? We'll see. We'll <laughs> see if it gets brought up. And if it does, I'll, I'll, I'll put my hands up to it. Um, okay, so she leaned in and whispered in my ear in her sexiest voice, don't worry, I'm fat too. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> No. The audacity. (laughs) The fact that she made it sexy. Yeah. No. In that little sexy voice in the ear. Um, No. (laughs) Yeah, I'd have to like waddle my podgy ass down to the gym at that moment. I wouldn't even pull my boxers back up. I'd boxers around the ankle. I'd just be crying. Just want I'd be like Peter Griffin. (laughs) After he gets fingered by his doctor. Yeah. I'd be me. 
just straight down to the gym. Jesus, my, oh, my Do you know God. how much now I want to do that during sex? I can't promise I won't strike you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next one. Deliberately, oh, fuck. <laughs> Always a good start. Oh, fuck. Deliberately pooping on my dick during anal so that they could offer to clean it off with her mouth after. <laughs> okay, look, it's been a good run, 11 episodes. We can't keep doing this. I feel like this is too much internet for the day. This is too much internet for the day. That's straight All right, up thanks for listening, guys. Yeah, fuck See you next. <laughs> okay, so... Oh, the smell. She wants to eat <sighs> shit. Right, look, we can't judge people for their kinks. I'm We've not. all got crazy kinks, but I just don't get scat shit. and then scat in mouth. Just, no, it's just not for it's me. making me sad. But if you're into it, let us know. <laughs> yeah, but it's making me sad. Oh, anyway, right. What happened during sex that made you never want to sleep with that person again? He tried to put his toes in my vagina. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's something you should talk about beforehand, for yeah. sure. Doing her doggy style and she starts moaning. I thought it was in pleasure. Next thing I know, she rips the biggest, most foul smelling fart I've ever experienced. To make it worse, oh, I can see her ass open up as it came out. <gasps> oh. <laughs> <laughs> that has to be a hell of a fart. <laughs> <sighs> Sounds like a fucking Pokemon move. Uh, Jesus. Right. <laughs> she keeps say she kept saying, hurt me, fucking hurt me. So I proceeded to get a little rougher. The usual pulling of hair, light choking, and mild squeezing. But that wasn't enough. She kept saying it, hurt me, you fucking pussy. <laughs> So, so I turned it off a notch, a bit of scratching, tighter pulling of the hair, a firmer choke and slapping her ass like she stole something from my grandma. But no, she still it still wasn't enough, which she demonstrated to me by screaming, hurt me like this, you piece of shit, before full on headbutting the wall. Fucking hell. Oh my God. There is a devil inside Listen, of that girl. The fact that she was trying to anger him. You pussy, <laughs> you piece of shit. She, she wasn't there for sex, man. She wasn't there for sex. She wanted to just be beaten up. She needs to get into like MMA or something. And saw therapy. And <laughs> <laughs> there's rough, and we love rough. And then there's really rough, which again we can get on board with. And then there's just violence. Yeah. Jesus. <laughs> just, I'd love to she, hear that session. She got cut, cut up in the car on the way to his and yeah, just wanted just to take needed, it out she, somehow. <laughs> yeah. Oh, this, that, oh my God. Right. The fact that the demasculation of that man is just fucking next level. And yeah. then th th that little chubby boy still in my head. That's going to be with me all week. I'm just going to be giggling at work. <laughs> okay, next. So what happened during sex that made you never want to sleep with that person again? She broke my banjo string due to overly aggressive and enthusiastic hand, hand job. job. I knew it was going to be hand job. Oh. Women don't understand the tenderness of a shaft. No, I guess not. Oh, no. Okay, giving him a blow job, I ventured a little further south and licked the gooch some. Nice. He was ticklish <laughs> and re reacted by near me in the head and kicking me in the chin, causing me to fall on the ground naked and ashamed. <laughs> 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 the image of just being there on the floor just like uh, 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 I've just nearly licked the bum hole and now I'm just beaten and on the floor I love that he found it so ticklish though I it, hope he giggled like a ticklish. little girl yeah. <laughs> um, it is ticklish though yeah. it's great Good. she kept saying tell me I'm beautiful tell me you love me it was our second date oh no 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 oh dear this is basically just a red flag parade yeah it is this is it? just a red flag parade <laughs> Tell me I'm beautiful. Tell me you love me. That's fucked up. He yelled, God bless America when he came. <laughs> <laughs> then he tried to choke me. I would have laughed if I'd been able to breathe. <laughs> what? What? Oh, wow. That guy oh was patriotic. Oh, my God. God bless. That's. Why did he then proceed to choke her after, after he come. came? That's fucked up. <laughs> oh, no. no. <laughs> God bless America. <laughs> Wow. Okay. We, we, we're we about men not being quiet when they come but. yeah do you reckon this guy looked at listened to our podcast a couple of weeks ago and was like I need to be loud I, when I come yeah. I God bless to, America I need, I need her to know yeah 
the only way you could be more American is if he lets off a load of shots and a fucking bold eagle takes off. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, go on. All right, was getting kinky with a guy friend in the dark. Bit him on the shoulder and a fucking zip popped into my <gasps> mouth. <gasps> Oh, that's made me feel sick. Uh, why, why are these all... They're either gut-wrenching or just psycho women. What's going on? Oh, uh, that's... Uh, I feel like that's going to unlock a new fear in people. Don't be biting shoulders of people you don't in the, know. In the dark. In the dark. <laughs> oh, God, that's horrendous. Oh, the fact that she knew it went in her mouth means it was a big popper. Oh, let's move on. Let's all move right. on. People last don't want one. this. People aren't here to get horny about this. We're ruining hard odds. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Right, last one. What happened during sex that made you never want to sleep with that person again? I've been having sex with this girl for a while, but once when she comes, she went full exorcist. She made a manly war cry and her back arched to the point her vagina was eye level and scooted away from me in this position. After that, she kept saying, God damn, don't touch me and twitching for five minutes. Initially scared and then just weird. That was the end of that. I don't know. I kind I've of, got a couple of opinions on that. To that be honest. kind of turns me on a little bit. The fact that you've done something so wild to her, it's just broken her body, it's broken just, her brain. He just turned her into Linda Blair. Yeah. That's... If you don't know who Linda Blair is, she's the original exorcist. Oh, God, you're so you're so <laughs> trendy, aren't you? Um, um, yeah, no, I'm a, I'm, I am don't know, I think that's I mean, good. I mean, take that as a fucking compliment. 100%. The fact that she sat there for five minutes twitching, going, God damn, don't God touch damn, me. <laughs> don't touch me. God damn it. Yeah, you broke her brain. You broke her back. Let's go back there. You, you, she's, she, you can orgasm her. But listen... It, We've we've heard it before. We've said it before. That crazy pussy is, I mean, it's different. in some of those, the crazy pussy was fucking ridiculous, <laughs> and the most patriotic man in the world. Tell me, I'm beautiful and that you love me. Oh God, I reckon the bloke who screamed "God bless America" was wearing double denim whilst having sex. Just and he poking had a his dick through that yeah, hole. Hundred percent. He had a he had a cowboy hat on. I can't see it any other way now. <laughs> I can't. Um, but yeah, Jesus. Yeah, I'd go back there and and. Yeah, poke that bear. <laughs> she sounds like she's definitely going to follow you home and 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 you know, flatten your tires, like stab your tires. But bro, life's for living, you know. Whatever you're into, yeah. <laughs> life's for living, right? That's the end of that. Yeah, we're there. Honestly, though, some of those are fucking disgusting. But the the first one, don't worry, I'm fat too. <laughs> is broken me. What are you? If there's ass? anyone listening to this, that casual sex is, can you just do that? And let us know. <sighs> that would be so funny. it sounds hilarious. That would be so funny. <laughs> um, right, guys, that's it for this week. We've gone heavy on this one. Yeah, it's gone heavy. One. Um, obviously, there's some there's some heavy shit we talked about. We hope we cheered you up at the end. <laughs> um, anything you want to help with, get on to us. On... Although I don't know whether you will after this week's ones. <laughs> yeah. But I-O-T-K dot fun, F-U-N. Yeah, you got any fantasies, any uh, trivia, any questions, any um, embarrassing stories or confessions, just fucking get on there and tell us. You can do it anonymously. Don't be a little bitch. I know you're all listening to it. Oh, and my, my one kind of came up in there with the poop. Yeah. Yeah. I don't even want to talk about it. Uh, I've actually got a submission that I'm probably going to use next week to do a poop that's quite similar. Okay, we'll we'll talk about it. Maybe it's her. No, it's not. It's from the man's point of view. It's, it's funny. <laughs> Mine wasn't funny. Mine was just horrible. You were the hero, though, in that situation. I didn't know what to do. <laughs> we need context, but I'll, I'll do it at a later date. It involves shit, so it's not great. <laughs> I didn't enjoy it, and she didn't care. It was weird. It's a weird time in my life. Bless you. <laughs> Bless me. Right, guys, as we said at the start, get onto the socials, uh, do all the good stuff. And yeah, make sure you um, subscribe to us and rate us because I see the ratings and they don't go up that often, even though I'm telling you all to. We so. was literally cooking dinner last night and he was like, oh, we're still stuck on what, 40, 40, 46. 46. And then he refreshed it. He went, never mind, it's 47 now. So I'm happy now. <laughs> it's been my day. Um, yeah, guys, uh, stay happy and keep fucking. Bye. Bye.